Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I'm recording this for marking purposes. This is candidate number 8791, 4826 and examiner number 7295. We are conducting this exam in Chennai. The time right now is 11.30. May I see your identification? Yes, here it is. Please take a look at it. And what is your full name? My whole name is Tanvi Nadar as it is in my passport. Please just call me by my first name, Tanvi. Okay, Tanvi. You can put your passport down. Okay. The speaking section has three parts. I will give you instructions for each part. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Where do you live? I live in Tamil Nadu, the most southeastern state of India, in its capital Chennai, in a two-bedroom flat with my parents. What do you do to relax? Um, there are several activities I like to do to unwind, including swimming, running, or watching a film. I have really been into nature documentaries these days. Let's talk about traveling. How often do you go on a trip? I think domestically, I mean around India, I go traveling at least two to three times a year. And my parents and I usually take a trip abroad once a year. Last year, we visited Bangladesh. When was the last time you went on a trip? Um, just the last month, I went on a five-day holiday to the neighboring state of Kerala where I visited some friends and we really had a good time hanging out and going to the beach. What was your favorite holiday? That's tough to say because I have had few amazing trips during the last years wherein uh, my family and I um, uh, took a trip to Australia. It was a two-week vacation wherein I got to see amazing animals like kangaroos and koala bears. So I think that one ranks at the top of my list for now. How has traveling changed during the last 10 years? There have been drastic changes to travel and tourism over the couple of decades, mostly because of the recent pandemic. Uh, many countries had to close their borders, so travel has become much more restricted and difficult. Some hotels have great deals right now and they are trying to get more customers. If you could go on a trip anywhere in the world, where would you go? Um, I have thought a fair bit about this recently for the reasons I mentioned earlier that I haven't traveled much. Uh, so if I could go anywhere, I would love to travel the east coast of the US all the way from New York down to Miami. I have seen a lot of these cities in the movies, so it would just be amazing to check them out in real life. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. So why does Tanvi get a perfect band 9 for her speaking part 1. Is her speech flawless? Does it sound like a native speaker? No, not exactly. But she is an expert user of the English language. She answers all of the questions in part 1 accurately with original content and detail using grammar and vocabulary dynamically. When she is asked about what she likes to do in her free time, she gives several answers. She says swimming, running, and watching movies. Then she uses advanced vocabulary. I have been into nature documentaries. This is present perfect. And it's good detail. Again, a little later, when asked with the present perfect, has traveling changed in recent years? Tanvi uses the present perfect twice in her response. She states that it has changed drastically and that it has become much more restricted. This clearly indicates to the examiner that Tanvi is comfortable using advanced grammar forms accurately. In the next question, when the examiner asks if you could go on a trip anywhere in the world, where would you go? Tanvi uses the conditional. She explains that if she had the chance to go on the trip anywhere in the world, she would travel the east coast of the United States. And then she connects this with previous content, 
mentioning that she would really like to go because she hasn't had the opportunity recently due to lockdowns. It's this type of connection among answers that makes the conversation sound more natural and that band nine level. Now, let's continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read the questions, think about your answers, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, mm -hmm. when to stop. In the one minute preparation time, you can take notes. You have some note paper there and okay. you have your pencil. Mm -hmm. um, do not touch the paper, please. Talk about a gift that you have given someone recently. Your one minute preparation time begins now. One of the most important components of a band nine score is fluent English. And that's why we have partnered with Cambly, a world-class app that lets you practice with native English speaking tutors from the US, Canada, the UK, and Australia. In fact, it's the only app in India that gives you this opportunity. To help you even more, Cambly has given us this code for a 22% discount for candidates in India. Simply click the link in the video description. I have tried Cambly and found it to be very practical for quickly improving English, whether it's for a job interview, studying abroad, a visa application, or your next IELTS exam. It's sure to help you reach your goals. Simply download the Cambly app and begin practicing one-on-one -on -one with a native English speaking tutor. Now, Let's continue with part two. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. I uh, surprised my mom on her most recent birthday with a pretty silver Bengal bracelet. I had been planning to get her a nice gift as this was her 50th birthday and I wanted her to feel very special. So I saved up a bit of money from work and did a quite a bit of searching both online and in a local store for just the right bracelet. I know that my mom had been window shopping for this kind of an accessory for a while. After some searching, I just found the right silver bengal at a local jeweler's called Twilight. Uh, this is a fine jewelry weighing 50 grams with a two-tone polish, a wave pattern and two elephant heads interlocking each other. The elephant symbolizes the removal of obstacles to bring good fortune and I definitely want my mom to have a comfortable life full of good luck. I got the jewelry and I asked the jeweler to put the silver bracelet in a nice box and I gift wrapped it in a pretty pink paper with a red bow. I uh, included a birthday card as well letting her know how grateful I am to be her daughter. I gave this to her last October at her birthday party wherein my family hosted at our home. I uh, gave it to her and she wears it every day and this makes me feel so happy. I gave this to her for my heart and I do not expect a gift in return. However, knowing my mom, I'm pretty sure she will get me a nice gift for my birthday as well. Your time is up. I will stop you there. Uh, can you please turn over the note paper and okay. put it to the side? Thank yeah. you. And. Uh, Again, in part two, Tunby checks off every criteria for that perfect band nine score. She gives a detailed and structured response to all of the questions on the cue card. She knows that when talking about an object, it's important to discuss where that object came from, what that object looks like, the use of the object and its value for the person. In this case, the silver bangle bracelet. She gives the details of the store's name, where she got it from, Twilight. She clearly describes what it looks like with the interlocking elephant heads. She even explains the symbolism of the elephant heads and her mother's 
feelings for receiving this bracelet for her birthday. It's this kind of detailed original structure that you need to fluently express in part two to get those high band scores, even a perfect nine. We will now continue with part three for this part. I will ask you some questions uh, connected to the topic of part two. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about giving presents. Do you think parents give too many gifts nowadays? Um, I think that uh, many parents do buy too many gifts for their children. I mean, kids get showered with so many toys these days that they don't even play with many of them or they play with them maybe once or twice before they end up at the bottom of a box. Why might this be negative? Um, this can be negative because kids can develop a lack of appreciation towards their belongings and uh, they will consume and destroy more. That would damage nature, not to mention it's expensive. Is gift giving important for the economy of a country? Uh, I think that buying gifts stimulates the financial flow in a country. I mean, billions of dollars are spent each year on uh, gifts. Uh, maybe uh, it can be uh, celebrations or various occasions or Valentine's Day, to name a few. How does giving gifts affect the environment? Um, nature unfortunately suffers from much of this gift giving culture, not only because of overconsumption, but also because of the packaging used for gifts and the wrapping papers. Why is it sometimes difficult to buy a gift for someone? Uh, some people are hard to figure out. I mean, it's tricky, especially when people have so many belongings. One of my cousin is really wealthy and he has about everything that a person can imagine and it's really difficult to get him to find him a nice gift. What are good ways to overcome such challenges? Um, I think uh, getting to know the person better and also uh, figuring out what the person might be into would be a good start. What are some practical gifts to buy for others? Uh, giving some uh, instruments or tools is usually quite practical. I mean, uh, the last time on my mom's birthday, I got her a soda maker, which was quite useful for making refreshing beverages for the family. When is it a good idea to buy a person a practical gift? Uh, if a person is short on cash or is missing out on some essential items, then that is a good idea to give them a practical gift. Um, buying some clothing for a person in need is a good example of this. How have the practices of gift giving changed compared to a generation prior? Uh, hmm. Let me think. Giving gift cards or cash has become much more popular. Uh, but in the past, people had much more time and they used to go out and uh, make gifts or else they had much more time to look around for giving much more meaningful gifts to people. Is this good or bad? I'm not sure. I think it would be nice if people had much more time buying a meaningful gift. But uh, I wouldn't say that uh, gift cards or cash would be bad by any means. Which kinds of presents have become popular over the last decade that wasn't such a fad in the past? I think electronic gift cards like Amazon, Google and Apple are trendy these days and digital devices like smartphones and smartwatches are way more popular now than in the past because they weren't available a couple of decades ago. Why is this? Uh, well, because people have switched to online shopping and it's much more convenient. That is the end of part three that concludes the speaking section of the IELTS exam. You will have your mark available online in about two days and you will have uh, your certificate in the mail in 10 days. Goodbye. Okay, goodbye. Thank you. Part three is where the examiner really decides whether or not the candidate is band eight or band nine. He's really looking for those detailed, specific, accurate answers using a broad range of vocabulary. Tanbi does this by paraphrasing the questions. When the examiner asks, 
if gift giving is important for a country's economy, she responds by saying that gift giving stimulates the financial flow within a country. It's this kind of advanced paraphrasing that gives added clarity, brings up that lexical resource mark, and earns that band 9 score. You will notice that Tanvi uses original examples throughout the interview taken from her own experiences. When asked in part 3 what kinds of gifts have become popular these days, she explains that gift cards for Amazon and Google have become popular as these did not exist in the past and nowadays people are really into technology. It's this kind of original language with good examples to support your explanations that will earn you band 9 results. You can do it, just keep up the practice and keep your eyes on the prize. Good luck the next time you sit your IELTS exam. For more videos like this one, original practice exams, a fully interactive course, an app for your phone, join our premium IELTS package at aehelp.com. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video. Click right up here. And click our IELTS hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.